My name's Zach, but everyone just calls me Ranger Zach. This is my wife, Corey. She runs the camera. We have a daughter. Make that two daughters. And this is my dog, Dose. I also play a pretty mean guitar. For the last 10 years, I've been a real life park ranger, protecting wildlife, fighting forest fires, rescuing lost hikers, and doing all sorts of cool stuff along the way. Now I'm here to teach you everything that you need to know to be a real life park ranger too. Hi Junior Rangers, welcome back to the Ranger Zack Show. Are you wondering why I'm wearing this hard hat? Well, I just got back from the adventure of a lifetime and I'm so excited that I get to share it with you today. I'm taking you to the deserts of New Mexico where we're going to explore one of America's most mysterious national parks, Carlsbad Caverns, a vast network of caves so large that many of its secrets are still left undiscovered. So come along with me to see what I found at Carlsbad Caverns. Did you ever want to know what makes a tree grow tall? A white turtle wears a shell on its back. To get your hiking boots and a walking stick, come along with Ranger Zach. Come along with Ranger Zach. It's the Ranger Zach Show. Okay, Junior Rangers, we're almost at the bottom, 700 feet down, Carlsbad Caverns. Here we go. Hey. Wow. As soon as the elevator doors opened, it was like walking into a dream. These caves were formed when water and acid mixed together and slowly began to eat away at the limestone rock. There are 120 caves that can be found throughout the park, but this number will continue to grow as new caves are explored and discovered. Maybe someday you'll be the first to discover a cave of your own, and if you do, you get to name it. What would you name your very own cave? Okay, Junior Rangers, here we are in Carlsbad Caverns. It's so cool. We're gonna see all these cool cave formations, but we have to whisper because sound really <laughs> echoes in here and we don't want to disturb other people. So come along with me. It's the Ranger Zack Show. Look at this, it's huge. This is the big room. And I can tell why they named it the big room. It's huge. The big room is the largest single chamber in North America. It's so big, you could fit six football fields inside it. Now I didn't bring a football with me, but I don't think they allow playing football inside the caves anyways. What an adventure we're on today. Deep inside Carlsbad Caverns, checking out caves. How cool. Exploring caves is called spelunking. Are you having fun spelunking with me today? It's so cool. As Juniper and I explored the cavern, 
we came across the most incredible cave formations, like these stalagmites. Stalagmites are spelled with a G because they grow from the ground and might touch the ceiling one day. And these stalactites, spelled with a C because they hang from the ceiling and they have to hold on tight. The two may eventually touch, and if they do, they form a column. And that's because I just call them like I see them. No matter how large a stalagmite or stalactite becomes, it could take thousands of years to grow just one inch, and it all starts with a single drop of water. As water drips down these caverns, they leave behind tiny bits of minerals. These minerals continually build on top of one another, creating these fantastic formations that we can see today. like this rimstone. Just check out those patterns. Or these rare cave pearls. Hey, I wonder if that's where Pearl the Squirrel got her name from. Here's some flower stone that we found. Doesn't it look like some kind of tea? Very thin and hollow stalactites are called soda straws. Hey Junior Rangers, what do you think this rock formation looks like? Popcorn, that's exactly right, and that's what it's called. Popcorn. Wow, Junior Rangers, this is so cool. If you're ever in New Mexico, you have to check this out. My mind is just blown away. After two hours of spelunking, I thought I might take this ladder to go explore even deeper. But Juniper was looking pretty tired by then, so I decided to take her back up to the surface. We rode the elevator and Juniper woke up just in time to visit the gift shop and make a mess. We said goodbye to Carlsbad Caverns and headed back home to the ranger station. Welcome home, Junior Rangers. That was some adventure we went on together. 
One of my favorite ways to document my travels to America's national parks is to collect stamps from each park I visit and put them in my park's passport. You can pick one of these up at any national park gift shop to start your collection of memories. For today's trip, I picked up two stamps, one for me and one for you. Let's put them in my passport together. Now that we got our stamps and our National Parks Passport, I'm gonna teach you how to make stalagmites at home. So hang stalactite while I go get my supplies for our stalagmites. Okay, Junior Rangers, I'm gonna teach you how to make stalagmites at home. Remember, stalagmites are spelled with a G because they grow from the ground and they might touch the ceiling. For this experiment, all you need is some sand. I have some colored sand that I got from a hobby store, some water, and a workstation. Today, I'm just using a piece of cardboard. To get started, put a light layer of sand down on your workstation. Next, what you want to do is mix your sand with some water so it's nice and wet. I'm going to start with this green color. Give it a little stir. It should be nice and wet, but not too runny. Once you have the right consistency, Take a little pinch and delicately start dripping it over the dry sand workstation. Does this remind you of the cave popcorn that we saw deep in the caverns? Let's try a different color now. How about some orange sand to go with our green sand? Don't forget to add the water. Let's start dripping. Once you get the hang of it, you can make a whole garden of stalagmites. Let's try it out.
And that's how you make stalagmites at home. I'm gonna go clean up and then we'll do the Ranger Roundup. Today's Ranger Roundup question was submitted by Finn from California. Thanks for your question, Finn. That's a lot to digest. Before a carnivorous plant can eat, it first has to attract its prey. It can do this using bright colors, sweet nectar, or interesting smells. Once the plant has its prey right where it wants it, boom, the trap is sprung. But because the plant doesn't have any teeth, it uses special chemicals that we call enzymes to slowly digest its prey over several days turning solid food into the nutrients it needs to survive. And that's the wrap on the Venus flytrap. Now let's do the Junior Ranger Challenge. This week's Junior Ranger Challenge is to go visit Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico. But if you can't do that, just try making stalagmites at home. You can use sand or mud or experiment with all different types of materials. Just see how tall you can make it. Make sure to tag me in a picture of your adventures at the Ranger Zach Show on Instagram for a chance to be featured as one of our Junior Rangers of the Week. And it really helps us out if you give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Just remember, Junior Rangers, until next time, there's a world of adventure right outside your door, so get out there and go explore. This is Ranger Zach, over and out.